Good morning and welcome to the Urban Transformation Talks. Uh, this is the first of a series of three events featuring the findings of Tango project. In this series, we will discuss uh, the challenges municipalities face when implementing sustainability projects and how these challenges are helpful for identifying new competences and skills. My name is Luciane Gerborges. I am Senior Research Fellow here at Nordregio, and I will be moderating today's webinar together with my colleague Lisa Rohrer. The title of today's webinar is Urban, What is Urban Transformative Capacity and Why Does It Matter for this Sustainability in Your City? So over the next hour, we will hear presentations from our project partners and we also have a panel discussion. And of course, we want to hear from you. So where are you joining us from this morning? So please write in the chat, where are you sitting, which city you are in Europe? And throughout the presentations, uh, you are also welcome to add uh, your comments and then also like questions in the chat, and we will address them during the panel discussion. We will also share like the presentation and the video recordings after the event. But before we begin the presentations, I will hand over to my colleague Lisa, who will say a few words about the Tango project and also introduce some of the speakers. Thanks, Lucien. Tango is an applied research project funded by JPI Urban Europe. The project uses the concept of urban transformative capacities to evaluate cities' potential for sustainability, specifically at the intersection of food, energy, and water systems. This is tested in the context of four European countries, Austria, Sweden, Norway, and Lithuania. The project involves five research institutions and seven municipalities. Ultimately, the project aims to help cities tackle challenges associated with climate change and encourage more sustainable urban development. And today we are joined by our partners from the Austrian Institute of Technology, the city of Stockholm and Klagenfurt municipality. We begin our discussion with Doris Wilhelmer. Doris is the project coordinator of the Tango project, and she holds her PhD in organizational development focusing on new types of trans-organizational soft governance formats, as well as systems-based innovation models. Since 2003, she has worked as an innovation researcher and systemic foresight facilitator at the Center for Innovation Systems and Policy at AIT. And after Doris, we will hear from Maria Lennartson, who is a sustainability and research coordinator of Stockholm Royal Seaport, which is a test bed district in the city of Stockholm. Her role is in, to ensure that the sustainability goals set for the district are implemented, and this requires research and, and development initiatives, cross-departmental collaboration, and engagement of external stakeholders beyond the public administration. And then we'll finalize our presentations of this webinar with, with Stefan Guggenberger. Stefan is an employee of the Climate and Environmental Protection Department in Klagenfurt. For years, he has been working in collaboration with the Municipal Project Management Agency, EPOC, on the implementation and advancement of the Urban Smart City Strategy. And now I invite you, Doris, to set the scene for us by providing a background about the concept of urban transformative capacities. So the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Lisa. So I'm very glad to introduce Tango W findings concerning UTC to you today. It's all about uh, to enable urban, regional, global pathways towards sustainability and resilience. So the goals today, um, I would like, uh, I will define uh, urban transformative capacity to you. I will introduce the success criteria of Wolfram to you. I will explain what is context governance and what is it for. I will show you transformative uh, governance instruments and introduce different roles of transformative civil servants and researchers to you. What is urban transformative capacity? It is the fundamental ability of cities to address and adapt to climate change challenges and their impact. Um, it enables systemic change and transformative adaption. It facilitates fundamental changes and potential to establish new systems or ways of uh, operating. Uh, Mark Wolfram uh, points out 10 components of a successful UTC. 
So besides system awareness for change, um, um, future orientation on visions and foresight processes, a community of practice experimentation on local levels, such as uh, urban living labs, embedded innovations, involvement uh, of uh, agency levels and multi-scalar interaction. It's, it primarily needs the leadership processes uh, between civil servants on the one hand and the re transformative researchers on the other hand, and thus mutual social learning processes and reflexivity, both leading to empowered communities of practices of actors on urban level. So what are the concrete success criteria of Wolfram? It is important, uh, the awareness for need of change, the political will to implement this change, the definition of a desired outcome and a transdisciplinary approach. And all these based in the city processes on a clear, long, medium and short term planning, a collaboration between all stakeholders, an equal access to resources for all, and of course, the investment into infrastructure and public services. The transdisciplinary approach Wolfram is acquiring needs a new kind of transfer transformative research. But what is this transformative research? Uh, our findings in Tango W projects are, it needs sustainability as the desired overall goal. Uh, it needs a transdisciplinary approach, starting with the questions of the cities and ending with the solutions for the cities. It needs a clear solution orientation and it needs a process orientation lasting three to five years and going beyond individual events. And of course, it needs also a second order cybernetic approach, which means that civil servants and research organizations observe themselves during the process of transformation and thus reflecting and learning and changing their own role. Yes, so I uh, uh, would like uh, now to hand over uh, uh, to Maria, yeah, um, um, in Sweden. Thank you very Thank much, you. Doris. <laughs> I will now share my screen as well. Uh, uh, sorry about that. I hope you can see my screen now. Yes, yes. Good. Um, yes, my name is Maria Lennartsson and I work in the Stockholm Marie Seaport project. But just to give you an overview of what Stockholm is facing in the next few years, uh, we have we are in the process of developing a new environmental program. Uh, we've been working with environmental issues since early 70s, 1970s, and we, we do have quite... Um, uh, uh, high high flying goals and also combined with that there will be a climate action plan how do we use the urban development in these cases uh, i mean the urban development that is taking place in stockholm now is in difficult places so in, and also with increased uh, complexity complexity it requires coordination and knowledge development uh, about 650 different projects are in the process of being implemented. And we do have a target of 140,000 new homes to be built in the next 20 years. And 61,000 are being planned or in a construction phase. So there's quite a lot of things going on. Uh, we use different tools to, to reach for a higher sustainability. We do implement research and development projects. We're using procurement as a, as a tool as well. Uh, we have land allocation. The city owns about 70% of the land in Stockholm. So land allocation with high sustainability requirements is one tool as well. And we do monitor and follow up the whole process. Oh, sorry, I 
press the wrong button. Uh, we, one other tool that has been being used is uh, to have an urban development as a sustainability um, pro uh, project. Stop and Roy Seaport is one, and the assignment is to develop, test, and learn, and also spread the, the knowledge and the experiences uh, in what, what we learn. Um, the City Development Administration is the spider in the web. So we have a quite a significant role in this. Uh, at the moment, it's about 7,000 people that live in the area. About 50 develop, de different developers have been uh, participating in the construction so far. And it's an ongoing process, an ongoing development that is probably going to be finalized in about 2045. So it's, it's, a, it's an extensive project. For the sustainability purposes, it has been set up as separate cross-departmental sustainability organization, uh, making sure that we involve experts from the different or uh, different departments and and uh, companies of the city. Uh, Stockholm, being one of the or the largest municipality in Stockholm, have access to quite a number of experts within its own organization. Um, but the, the sustainability organization is chaired and, uh, and chaired and managed by the city uh, development administration. At the moment, we have about seven different focus groups. And one of them is the ecosystem services, which is part of what we are doing in the Tango W. Uh, so what we do in the Tango W is we do an urban living lab. Uh, trying to find out how we can include urban farming into Stockholm Royal Seaport. And we, we talk about urban farming, it's not only using parks and, and courtyards, uh, but also how can we have more industrial farming on rooftops, uh, in basements, etc. Uh, if we're talking about urban farming, the are a lot of different stakeholders that need to be involved. These are just examples of who should potentially be involved in, in an urban farming project. We can't in, introduce or we can't collaborate with all of them within the urban and uh, within the project that we're implementing at the moment. So we do we separating it into a preparatory phase and then possibly also going into a uh, pilot phase. But within the preparatory phase, that the idea is to understand the potentials and also identify how the, what the impact is on city planning and how can we introduce tools within the city planning to, uh, to move on. And therefore, we are having an internal working group within the city. Uh, so the project management is supported by project management managers from the development administration who is in charge of land allocation project uh, processes. We have landscape architects in, uh, in, in charge of, of planning uh, public open space. We have biodiversity experts uh, who is in charge or understanding the, the whole biodiversity perspective of the city. We need city planning people uh, because at the end of the day, it has to be included in the city city's overall plan and also the uh, develop uh, the uh, agreements with the with the different um, um, developers. We have a sustainability strategist who is in charge of the whole sustainability uh, perspective, and also parks engineers who who are in charge of of managing operation and management of of uh, parks and not the least landscape architects who is in charge of operation and management of the city's streets. So we're looking both at streets and parks. We're also supported by urban farming expert who is going to do our overall uh, potential study and also by researchers uh, from academia. So it is a complex um, process where we try to make use of the experts that we have within the organization. And when we lack uh, competences, we also draw on external experts. 
we're not moving into a pilot phase as yet, but I thought I'd just describe how we work with piloting uh, project as well. Uh, I mean, the whole idea with piloting phase is to to uh, define what the pilot project is about. Uh, funding is a, a big issue as well. We have different ways of sourcing funding. External research funding is available both on, on national and, and in, uh, EU level, but the city itself has also uh, allocated quite a lot of funding for um, climate implement, uh, climate projects, so we can also source funding internally. And the implementation and, and evaluation phase is, of course, very important as well. Uh, we still try to draw on, on the city's own capacities, uh, but we also try to introduce uh, or collaborate uh, uh, with researchers in a in a much um, uh, active way uh, because there are lots of research going on uh, in our different research institutions around Sweden, and we try to um, tap into to that knowledge. But we also need to to introduce end users and developers for the private sector. So normally there's a triple helix or quadruple helix project that we're trying to, to uh, uh, set uh, place together. Uh, not everybody can be part of the project itself, uh, but we try to, to pinpoint the most important um, stakeholders to be part of the project. But we also see that there is a need for reference groups, uh, both from, um, uh, stakeholders that are more on the verge of, of uh, the matter, but also uh, when we talk about um, projects in the nexus of food, water and energy, uh, it might be a food project that we're working with, but it also relates to uh, water and energy. So we're using uh, the reference group as introducing also experts from other fields that are related, but not necessarily involved. Um, yeah, I think that was what I was going to say, so I will hand over to Stefan. Thank you very much, Maria. Let me share my screen now with the presentation from Klagenfurt. Just one second. <clears throat> and you should be able to see my screen now. Is that right? Yes, we can see Okay, it. perfect. So uh, let me first of all introduce myself. My name is uh, Stefan Guggenberger. I'm employed in the city of Klagenfurt um, in the Department for Climate and Environmental Protection. And not also only within the Tango W project, we are involved in a in a many research programs and projects. And uh, that's the, our purpose basically is to reach climate neutrality in Klagenfurt as fast as possible. We have currently the ambitious goal of reaching climate neutrality by 2030. That's based on the EU cities mission for climate and uh, for smart and, and climate neutral cities by 2030. And this European initiative um, is our basically our main aspect why we also need some need to to work on on our internal governance structure in the city of Klangfurt to um, improve the governance structure and to be able to, to reach um, climate neutrality with our organization. Um, unlike Stockholm, not everybody might have heard of the city of Klagenfurt. Um, so let me introduce the city. First of all, uh, we are located in the very south of Austria. We have about uh, 100,000 inhabitants, uh, daytime population of about 160,000 uh, people. So there are a lot of people coming to work to the city or students, um, for example. Um, as you can see on the picture as well, we are a very green city already. So we have a lot of uh, agricultural land and, and also forests within the city area. And our target is not only to become climate neutral, but also keep the high quality of, of life uh, um, um, at least on the same level as it is now and also improve it towards our climate climate ambition and climate goals. Mm, 
the city of Klagenfurt um, has built up an internal governance structure to be able to reach climate neutrality. And that is based on a, a lot of experience from uh, former uh, funding projects we have been involved. Um, that's a tradition we have in Austria since almost more than two decades. Uh, we have a, a lot of project experience. And based on those first projects uh, we had in the, in the early 2000s, um, we were able to really set political decided climate targets to be reached uh, in the upcoming years. And uh, the, the, the first uh, politically decided goal was in the year 2011, where we joined the covenant, uh, the convent of covenant of mayors uh, with the climate target to reach, um, to reduce emissions by 20, 20 percent. Um, we could reach the, this target in this year. And that was uh, the starting point for us uh, also to um, to really from year to year start to be more ambitious with our climate targets and with our smart city and climate strategy um, we found ways and we found solutions we developed projects um, to be able to reach climate neutrality already by 2030 and that's based on the eu cities mission um, where we have recently also received the eu mission label as one of the first 10 cities um, of this cohort of of cities participating. So there, there has been a lot of development in the past already and governance structures being set up. Um, just a small uh, indication on, on how our climate pathway is looking. Um, we have uh, already three um, um, calculations done already uh, towards our climate balance. And so we can see that we have already uh, reached a significant amount of, of savings and we have reduced our emissions already um, when we look uh, when we compare the years 2011 to 2018 um, by by 53 percent and we are uh, on a very good pathway to to be able to reach climate neutrality um, by by 2030 so with our current projects out of the smart city and climate strategy it's possible to to decrease the, the emissions by up to 83% and the uh, remaining residual emissions we would compensate with, with, with measures as well. So we have a very clear pathway and measures in the background that, will, uh, that would make it possible to reach climate neutrality. And all those measures are being implemented with the governance structure of our city, obviously. Um, just as a small overview, we have uh, the, the political layer with the city parliament and city council. Then we have the directorate and 23 um, expert departments within our city. And one of these expert departments is the Department for Climate and Environmental Protection. And that's the main department, uh, which is... Uh, uh, which, which is networking with other cities, which, which is networking with European um, initiatives and um, translating climate goal, goals, climate targets from the international level down to the city level and translating this also into measures and, and targets within our uh, climate strategy. In the department, we also have the EPAC. It's a project management agency that is owned by the city um, where our employees are not only, but most of the time developing funding projects, um, applying for funding money and uh, try to find ways to, to develop projects in the way that they commit to our climate targets. And that also means um, cooperation with our local stakeholders, a local utility provider, for example, the Stadtwerke or the Klagenfurt Mobil um, organization that is responsible for public transport and of course other external um, organizations as well. And for us and our job in our department is to, to translate the European goals on climate protection, climate targets, the national uh, programs and also other in, uh, international in it, initiatives down to a city level. So there are, for example, in Austria, we have the, the national pioneering program with the goal to reach climate neutrality by 2040. The EU cities mission on a European level um, has the goal to be climate neutral by 2030 for those 112 cities. And then there are other initiatives as well, like the covenant of mayors, um, urban transition mission, uh, Civitas Forum or the Climate Alliance, where we are 
uh, actively participating. And we are translating everything that is uh, all those set goals down on a, on a local level and then reach out to cooperation partners uh, for networking on a local level, also to different Austrian cities and cities in, in our region, in, in Carinthia, and also citizens and politicians, obviously, because we need their commitment and their participation as well. Um, so one of our most important steps in the last year, in the year, in the year 2080, was the development of our smart city and climate strategy, where all this, the 23 city departments, expert departments, have sat down together, developed a strategy, uh, commit their their work into one of the one of each um, nine fields of actions that are part of the of our climate strategy, and we have working groups, integrated external experts, and have developed 236 very concrete measures um, to be able to reach our climate targets by 2030. So climate neutrality by 2030, and then also um, in the upcoming years after 2030, additional climate projects for compensation. And that strategy obviously is politically decided as well. And then the latest development in Klangfurt to be able to implement the measures out of the smart city strategy, we also need a very huge commitment and integration of local stakeholders. And that's the innovative governance we have, right? So we are not only dealing internally to cooperate between the different silos of our um, ex expert departments, we now try and we now foster to, to reach out to local stakeholders, integrate them, make them commit towards our climate targets and be part of the whole process. So we have uh, implemented a smart climate lab, which is a citizen office in the city center of Klangfurt, an office that is only dealing with climate projects, inform informing uh, citizen and, and companies and stakeholders and try to develop projects uh, together. So uh, six full-time equivalents are currently working there and um, are basically developing projects. And with this new governance structure in Klagenfurt, um, we are able to reach out to the external departments and to the city departments, to, to Stadtwerke, to external partners, find um, potential projects, be able to write projects, project applications, apply for projects and then manage the projects, right? And that brings brings innovation to Klangfurt, that bring, brings funding money towards Klangfurt. And then that also brings a uh, local stakeholder on our ambitious climate targets. So it's a joint, a joint development and a joint um, uh, um, way to, to work together. Mm. And to make that a little bit more concrete, um, I would like to show you some figures, what that means for uh, funding money, for example. So you can see in the last uh, 20 years, there were some isolated projects uh, where we received funding. And now with the, with the ambitious climate targets and with the smart climate lab, and with the focus on project development, we have really accelerated the way towards climate neutrality by bringing funding money, by bringing innovation research organizations to to Klangfurt and help us support in this uh, context. Mm. And I Sorry? Please, yes. Uh, please, can you uh, wrap up for us? Yes. Uh, one last slide, uh, just a small insight in, in what we are doing in our Tango projects. Um, that's one example with our Smart Climate Lab, where we reach out to local stakeholders, citizens in a new city district, and connect them with relevant stakeholders and form, for example, in this case, a renewable energy community together. So we are the, the relevant node in the whole system that brings stakeholders together and work jointly on climate protection targets. Yeah, I've basically summarized it already. So thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward to the panel discussion and I hand back to Luciane. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Maria, as well, for your presentations. And now I will just turn back quickly to Doris, who will provide more about both cities, Stockholm and Klagenfurt, through the lens of like the context governance. So, Doris, please. 
thanks a lot uh, to you, Luciane. <clears throat> yeah, I, I would like to uh, start uh, with a compliment <laughs> yeah, to Maria as well, uh, to Stefan, uh, because they really built up the precondition for uh, transformation projects in the cities. Also, Stockholm being the spider in the network, it's a beautiful uh, picture, uh, which shows this uh, importance of uh, uh, networking as well as uh, this climate lab of uh, uh, Stefan. Um, yeah, having this translation and bridging function between inside and outside, and thus also between uh, researchers for the, uh, on the one hand and stakeholders and uh, the city administration on the other hand. So these are the structures which are needed that uh, transformative governance can uh, take place. And uh, in my second part, I would like to introduce uh, transformative governance and transformation, uh, transformative roles to you. And you see from the organizational development theory and organizational development processes in enterprises, we have learned that an instructive top-down steering mode never works. It only triggers resistance. So this is the reason why a transformation needs context governance. Um, context governance in the sense to coordinate and to motivate all stakeholders concerned in the direction of an overall goal uh, in this uh, sense uh, uh, towards sustainability. And uh, this is carried out via the implementation of a collaborative framework um, which allows to um, build up a, a transformative and innovate, innovative milieu. Yeah, um, and uh, uh, urban uh, living labs are a transformative uh, governance, um, um, context uh, governance um, instruments uh, in uh, this perspective. Um, the uh, organizational uh, theory points out that uh, simple projects need project management, uh, but complex projects need process facilitation and a comprehensive transformative projects like Tango W and all these GPR Urban Europe projects and Horizon projects, they need systemic counseling and systemic interventions. And Tango W um, uh, answers uh, to this requirement by building up a transformation room. And this transformation room, it's the next slide, yeah, really, thank you, uh, is uh, about uh, embedding both uh, the system of the city on the one hand with all the stakeholders and, and uh, decision makers and the consultative research system on the other hand um, and by implementing a transformative leadership system consisting of a transformative civil servant like Maria, like Stefan and on the other hand uh, uh, of uh, transformative researchers. Um, yeah, and uh, thereby the new is that uh, transformative researchers are collaborating uh, with all representatives of the city on eye level. Um, and um, uh, this, um, uh, in the graph, you see a different uh, communication setups. You're working through project management, uh, um, uh, stakeholder forums, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, these are um, communication setups. And the new is that the transformative researchers cooperate with these uh, uh, different uh, boards and uh, communication uh, elements on eye level. But the, uh, the kind, how this is built up, also allows all stakeholders involved to cooperate with each other on eye level beyond hierarchy. hierarchy. And this is important uh, to a uh, critical question and to allow transformative uh, processes. To uh, implement uh, transformative uh, projects and um, Transform transformation rooms uh, in practice needs also changed roles uh, for civil servants and for researchers. Uh, what does it mean concrete? Researchers are now uh, challenged not to only bring in their content, not at all. It's more about to act as systemic counselors of turbulent transformation processes. 
on the other hand, uh, the project managers of the cities, they are uh, forced uh, to have the perspective on the city uh, as a whole, as the system of the city, uh, and um, um, to uh, um, carry out uh, cross silo cooperations inside and uh, uh, intense uh, um, innovative uh, stakeholder um, dialogues outside. So it's to be systemic kind of uh, uh, project managers. And this, of course, needs a paradigm shift from a mechanic mechanistic approach to a systemic approach. And what is this paradigm shift uh, about? Um, uh, if um, it would be the next slide. And um, it's about to focus on relationship patterns and not on individuals. It's about uh, to focus on usefulness uh, and uh, uh, the impact, not about truth or false. It's about to act with questions and non-knowledge, not with knowledge. It's about to uh, focus on transformative communication dynamics and not on uh, 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 only on content. It's about uh, context governance uh, and uh, not about instructive interventions top down. It's about uh, reflection and uh, questions and co-creation methods and not about uh, advice and construct instruction. It's about a clear solution orientation, not problem orientation. Uh, focus on uh, potentials and resources, not on deficits. It's a uh, focus on future orientation, not on past, on uh, visions and metaphors, not only and exclusively on analysis. It's about of widening the options for the city for transformation and not about searching for one single unique solution. Mm. Thanks a lot. Mm. Thank you all for your presentations. Now I'd like to invite uh, our speakers, presenters back to the screen for a panel discussion. And uh, I would like to turn to you, Doris. You have talked quite much about like urban transformative capacity from a research perspective. And uh, can you clarify very quickly in layman's terms, what is urban transformative capacity and why does it matter for urban sustainability? Just to set up, like to kick off our discussion. Yes, thanks a lot, Luciane. Um, urban transformative capacity is building up the capabilities of all uh, decision makers and uh, uh, project managers in the city, as well as uh, in the stakeholders. It's about uh, widening the potential for transformation. Yeah, this is uh, the most important thing because uh, what Ever comes uh, uh, um, concerning uh, challenges, this capability is uh, the base of resist, uh, resilience. It allows to deal with all upcoming challenges. And this is uh, what uh, um, urban transformative uh, capacity is about. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Well said, Doris. And uh, well, we also have like the perspective of like two uh, civil servants. And then I would like to turn to Maria for Stockholm Royal support is like internationally recognized for achieving ambitious like sustainability goals. So I just wonder if you could share a little bit more about like how are you managing to be successful with governing transformative projects in this like large and complex context of like Stockholm Stad? Well, uh, like I said, Stockholm Royal Seaport has been appointed uh, a special learning um, perspective uh, and we're learning to, to have slightly different governance systems within the Stockholm Marine Seaport. Like I was explaining, the, the sustainability organization, it's, it's not a common, um, organ it is not an organizational structure that is set up for every uh, urban development project, but it's, it's special for Stockholm Marine Seaport. But at the same time, we're also introducing, um, we're trying to, to interact with other uh, urban development projects um, and trying to uh, get the perspective of of uh, what they need as well. Um, it is very it is very difficult sometimes to to set up such a structure for each and every project. But um, by interacting with the civil servants in other projects, we we can still 
provide the, the insight and the, and the input through our project. And also using the, the innovation project or, or research and development project for that purpose is really, really important. Uh, because in the research and development projects, we also uh, have uh, interdepartmental working groups, which gives the perspective of each and every person or each and every department can give their perspective into the the benefits and the and the hurdles, so to speak, in in implementing this. So this inter research and development projects could be the way forward for a large uh, organization like Stockholm. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Stefan? Because it seems that you share a sort of similar role as Maria when it comes to bridging and translating. Um, the knowledge from science into practice, since you maintain these strong connections with scientists through Klagenfurt's engagement in international projects. So I wonder if you could share a little bit more about the ways you've been able to achieve the involvement of key external stakeholders in your work and how you've also involved other people in other departments. Yeah, thanks for the question. So to be very honest, um, it's not an easy task to involve uh, other departments as well. Um, of course, in the climate and environmental protection target, we know about the climate crisis, we know about biodiversity crisis and everything that's connected to those topics, but not every other department has the knowledge and even has the interest in interest in cooperating. So uh, back in the year 2018, it really was the uh, necessary to work on a new strategy. And that's where the um, the smart city and climate strategy um, was developed um, and it was a, a joint a process together with uh, different depart department and it was uh, uh, politically um, um, yeah, the politicians decided that we need a, a sustainability strategy for our city so the the other departments were involved basically and uh, we we worked in different uh, working groups and that later on and uh, as it is uh, working now is has opened the door for project development and pro uh, project implementation um always with the connection to sustainability and and climate protection so it is yes it is about uh, the commitment of other departments their own commitment and, and and that's the that's the, the the challenge we face, right? To keep them on board, to keep them on track, to um, make them motivated to commit to those to those tar targets. Yeah. Mm, okay. So, like the the main messages that I get, like from this discussion so far, is that uh, the public administration needs to change, yeah, the ways of working to be able, like, to efficiently respond, like, to current challenges. And this is the first one. And then the second one is that context governance is a must for urban transformation towards sustainability. Um, I got from Maria that like Stockholm Royal Seaport operates in a pretty different like governance model, as she mentioned before, characterized by cross sectoral interactions, dialogues like with private and then also like with civil society and so on. So what would be like the main challenges of upscaling this model like for the entire city of Stockholm? Is it possible? Or like what would take it? I suppose if, uh, if there is a, a mandate, yes, it's possible, but it also requires resources. Um, the question is if one thinks that the resources are available or not. It is quite uh, in, uh, uh, resource intensive to have such a structure. But at the same time, the, the focus groups that we've established for Stockholm Marine Seaport are gradually also becoming um, groups that support the entire city. So eventually this type of, of, of cross-sectoral uh, focus groups and working groups uh, could also benefit the city as a whole, um, eventually. Mm, great. Thanks, Maria. And Doris, I want to ask from your perspective, how can researchers and civil servants drive transformative capacity? What lessons do the cases of Stockholm and Klagenfurt reveal to us about achieving this? 
um, you said, I think Luciana said uh, um, that uh, public administration has to change the role, but it's also about uh, researchers. They have also to change the role because researchers uh, often uh, experienced as uh, being very abstract, not understandable and uh, not really practically uh, and supportive. So uh, I think uh, what's about a, a successful uh, transformation towards sustainability needs a solution oriented cooperation between both and uh, this meets uh, uh, this means uh, uh, to really transform the roles so it's also uh, to uh, um, uh, yeah to jump out of prejudges no? trans uh, uh, researchers are not only theoretically people yeah who are let's say yeah, obstacle for transformation but they really they are supportive um, if you are working with uh, transformative researchers, not all researchers are transformative researchers. So this needs really uh, the uh, uh, capability uh, to uh, ask and uh, to uh, check uh, who is your vis-a-vis -vis when you are working in the public administration uh, in order to be able to utilize their um, uh, 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 systemic and methodological approach. And the other way around, yeah? uh, the uh, researchers are not allowed to, uh, to bring in their solutions is that technology, it will solve all problems for you. And if you don't, um, if something goes wrong, you uh, did uh, wrong in your implementation steps in the city. So this is not uh, the approach, but it's about to understand the city, the city representatives and the system, uh, uh, what I already have uh, carried out. And it's uh, about to build up a joint basis of trust and of the same uh, approach of viewing uh, uh, the city as a social system, which can't be governed uh, instructive top down, but it must be uh, developed step by step uh, in a collaborative way. Mm. Yes, thank you, Doris. Yeah, we'll pick up on what you said and uh, put up a question with Stefan, because like our discussion then just highlights that urban transformative capacity arises from the interaction between different actors and then also from this comes like the identification of new roles and also like skills. But this means that not only, as Doris said, like civil servants, they uh, who, who must change the, like their ways of working, but also like researchers. And then I'm just uh, curious about in your experience, what, how has been like this interaction of a civil servant with a researcher? Like you can please expand a bit on that. Yeah, um, it's first of all, also, again, a challenging, challenging task because uh, in a municipality, um, not everybody is speaking the scientific language, right? Not everybody is understanding it. Uh, it's uh, in the municipality. It's way more direct. It's way more uh, practical, for example, because things need to happen uh, for the purpose of the city. For the the city needs to function basically so there is not that much time or not that much uh, um, uh, uh, resources to to really interpret and understand scientific uh, results so i am somewhere in between of those uh, um, uh, functions i'm not directly uh, employed in the city of Klangfurt. i'm in the epac in the project management agency and with those uh, um, with our participation in in research uh, projects. I, on the other ear, uh, like I have the municipality on the one side, and on the other side, I have the the research organization that are bringing the the knowledge and the scientific results and 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 research to Klangfurt. I need to be able to translate those uh, those languages, right? So what is happening, for example, like in in our project, I need to be able to bring that on uh, into the municipality, and that's a different way of talking to people. I need to talk differently to politicians. I need to talk differently to head of other departments. And I need to talk different to to you as research organizations. Right. And that's a uh, there is a need for a, uh, understanding the system, understanding the, the, the theory behind that. Right. So what does a politician want to hear? What mm -hmm. does somebody from a finance department department want to hear what is their purpose in in all those uh, interactions between us and that's the challenge and that's the 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 job we are doing in our smart climate lab to be able to bring innovation to Klangfurt, research results research uh, projects and then 
bring them uh, into other departments and uh, uh, work together with local stakeholders. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. And Maria, would, would you like also like to add some thoughts about your interaction with researchers, like what has been good and what has been a bit challenging and give some advice to, to the researchers on how to reach out better civil servants? Uh, I agree fully with Stefan. Uh, you, you need some kind of interpretation, both interpretation of languages, but also interpretation of, of uh, prior, priorities. Uh, sometimes it, it looks very simple to implement something, but when you're trying to implement it in an organization, there are so many different priorities that you have to understand and how this solution will fit in. It's not just a solution that you plug into something, but it's a solution that needs to be adapted to an organizational setup, to a financial setup, etc. And the larger the 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 organization is, the more difficult it is to bring everybody together. And I think researchers need to understand that, but it's not only researchers, but it's also innovators in general, because there are lots of innovators that come and propose solutions. And and it's, it's not that simple. It has to fit into, it is a, it, it is a, it is a puzzle and you have to understand that, that the puzzle is quite complex. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Maria, for those yeah, honest reflections. It's really good to hear. Um, and Stefan, we have a question from the audience that's directed to you from Yvonne from London, who asks, uh, could you please explain where the core funding for the Smart City Unit and the City Council's support for the climate strategy come from? Speak a little bit about Yeah, that. the development of the of the Smart City core team, it was basically a necessity in the in the year 2018 that the structure internally has developed like this. There was at this point no funding included. But now with our smart climate lab where we are uh implementing and developing uh, projects out of the smart city and climate strategy, um, we have the lucky situation in Austria that we have a uh, huge support from the national uh, ministry, from the climate ministry. Uh, we receive funding um, to to be able to employ staff in, in our smart climate office, but also with the with the job to um, to also raise funding money, personal costs out of, of funding project to be able to uh, to work independent uh, from the from the national um, uh, pioneer program it's called in Austria so the national ministry is supporting 10 Austrian cities um, to be able to build up those resources that are needed to um, to, to work towards climate neutrality and, and projects uh, that that correspond to to those targets so yes uh, on the one hand a commitment from the city uh, basically without funding money, but then the implementation that gets uh, supported. And that's very uh, necessary for us. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. So that's why it's, in our case, very important as a city to commit and to be part of those European and national initiatives. That's that's key, right? And I'm sure there are also cities in Austria that don't have that drive towards uh, participating in a European initiative. But then you know, you you don't know those uh, those uh, overall targets, and you don't know what's happening, and you don't know the 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 funding landscape, the European funding landscape, and the national fun funding uh, landscape. So that's why it's important to be part of those national and international initiatives. In our case. Makes sense. I think we'll wrap up with just one last question here, um, and it's directed to you, Doris. Uh, for cities interested in driving urban transitions, where would you recommend that they begin? What is a good first step? Uh, this is a very good question. <laughs> yes, I think um, I think it's important uh, to uh, build up uh, a group of people inside the city, like uh, this climate lab or Maria and her colleagues, uh, who are really interested in sustainability issues and who are not afraid uh, to work in a, a hybrid uh, cross uh, um, uh, structures, uh, just uh, um, 
yeah, uh, interlinking all actors, but it uh, it's also the need to go between all these departments. So you have to be very autonomous. You have to face that you never will uh, do it right to anybody, uh, but uh, uh, you uh, can um, uh, um, yeah enhance the development uh, towards uh, this uh, sustainability in grasping all these potentials which are available and people who are sitting in one seat can't see them. So to have these people outside to ha that have the view on the whole system that are uh, not afraid, but uh, that are really uh, looking forward to, 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 to find their own profile and uh, to, to work out cooperation inside and outside. Yeah, And to, let's say, to shape the future, not to be part of a staff uh, only, but to shape the future for the city and for the region uh, towards more sustainable yeah, and that's not easy, but it's uh, a worry inspiring. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think uh, uh, Maria did it for years. Yeah, and you have to build up a uh, high knowledge uh, and you have to be very patient and you have to keep your vision in your mind and not to give up if it doesn't work uh, um, uh, in the short term, mm -hmm. uh, but to stay uh, in your uh, uh, vision and uh, what's really important in your life uh, being a part of this um, city administration mm -hmm. so maybe you will not do it a perfect career but you will be very important for the city <laughs> thank you so much Doris. well we are almost out of time and before we end today we want your feedback on this webinar so you should see a poll on your zoom screen where you can provide your input now um, thanks to again to our speakers for a nice presentations and good discussion and thank you all for joining us online next week we will continue our webinar series by looking at implementing sustainability projects by putting urban transformative capacity into practice we are going particularly to look at Nortelli in Sweden and Halden in Norway so yeah keep with us and then in the coming days we will also be sharing the presentation and the recordings with all of you who registered and if you like to stay up to date with tango uh, project so please visit our website you'll find like the link in the chat um yes thanks again for joining and i wish you we wish you a wonderful day yeah thanks